Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a ranking of the new master sets that came out in NHL 22 16-bit heroes event. Now, if you watch my event details video, you obviously know I'm not really super thrilled about this event. The card art is incredible, but the master set players are just very odd choices. And not only that, it just seems like an extension of the prior event that we just got. The under 22 event, in my opinion, was the best event ever done. And I think the format was great. Everything. Here's the issue. They essentially, I don't want to say copy and pasted, because honestly, they gave worse master set up player items as options, but they kept the same format and didn't approve upon it. They didn't innovate with it or anything like that. And while pro, I think that it allows everyone to get in on the actual cards. So again, having the option for free to play players to pick up one of these 86 overall master icons and then upgrade is phenomenal, but they are capped at 92. And that's clearly becoming an issue and some strong feedback from the community and myself. I think that for the players that are playing for the end game, the 92 cap is just really tough to invest in some of these guys. But again, for free to play, I think it is awesome that you are able to get these 86 cards and then upgrade throughout I'm going to talk about just some of the other things and ideas that I have with this event. And I'm going to show you comparisons as to why I think that this event just, the master sets just really aren't all that great. All right, let's get into the ranking of the 16 bit heroes event. All right, so first up, incredible card art. Like I said, this is some of the best. I love this. But I do want to mention another thing about these events. They really just don't make much sense. So the 16 bit heroes. That just pertains to the cards. There's nothing about Philip Grubauer that makes him, you know, uh, let's say an old video game style card art master item. It would have made much more sense if this was like a, you know, Bill Ranford or someone from back in the 90s. You know, Mike Richter, for example. Philip Grubauer was just a kid, really, when all these games were out. So don't really understand the, the thought process on that. But again, the card art is incredible. That being said... This is clearly the worst master item, and it's not really close. So distributor as an option, fly the zone and buzzing, that's phenomenal. As well as bombarded light the light magician, those are great ones. And applesauce is a third one. But when you go through, there's nothing that he can get that makes him good enough to play because he's only six foot one. I've talked about this a number of times, guys. There, you know, it is more viable more now more than ever to use smaller goaltenders because of the stat caps on some of these cards that are really really tall but master set items don't really get hit by the stat caps so there's no reason to have grubauer over ottinger or over spencer knight you know the six foot one is just not really able to be used where you're not gonna have He's not probably going to kill you because his stats are so good, his attributes are so good, but he's not going to give you an edge at all, and that's really the most important thing. Post-to-post -post is incredible, but the 87 X-Factor carry price that has post-to-post -post has been one of the best goalies that I've used in quite some time. So this is clearly the lowest rung master set, and if you packed him, sell him immediately, there's just no use. Uh, you're not going to have any advantage here, and you're going to be selling them after you play 20 games anyways. Coming in at number three is the 92 Rupe Hints, and this is one of the best centermen in the game. Okay, now, like I mentioned, the problem and the lackluster of this event is that we just had three cards that almost mimic this entirely in the prior editions Masters. So the under-22 event, Dylan Cousins, Byfield, and Doc in my opinion, are all slightly better, or at least uh, Rupe hints you won't see a big enough improvement. So he does have Buzzing, which is great, or Spark, whatever one you want, Thief, and then Applesauce. Those are three great synergies, okay? But let me show you guys, again, what I said earlier in the video. Let's take a look at the comparisons, okay? So the comparisons to Doc and Hints, all right? As we go down, Speed, 90 to 91, you'll have Buzzing activated on both of these if you are trying to maximize it, or you could have um, a Spark activated activated but again that would make them the exact same his balance is almost max though and at six foot four it's so hard to knock byfield off the puck and his agility is slightly better shot accuracy is 93 on hints but it's 96 power on byfield that's kind of a wash deking at 95 on byfield only 92 on hints so you see here and then all the body checking and strength ones slightly bigger or a little bit more of a gap on byfield defensive awareness is a little bit higher for rupe hints but you can have thief activated on both of these guys so it really just it's 
if you had Byfield, there's no reason to go get Rupe Hints. All right. Now, I guess it technically, if you missed out on Byfield, then okay, go get Rupe Hints. He's going to be a little bit cheaper because the sets now for the under 22 event have moved on to like the sunset format. And that obviously makes it a little bit more uh, expensive now because obviously that event is no longer on. So you can get Rupe Hints at a little bit of a discount, but he's exactly the same card as Byfield, just an inch shorter, essentially. Then we've got the 92 Eric Brandstrom. And honestly, right now, this looks to be a really, really fun card. I, I won't lie. He does have Spark. Spark, again, I've mentioned this a number of times, so for anyone that hasn't been watching my channel, Spark is very difficult to activate because you'd rather have Distributor fly the zone, and any card that has Spark more than likely has Distributor fly the zone. So let's say you get it activated. You've got Applesauce and Protector, two very good ones as well. 94 speed, 96 acceleration, 98 agility. He's one of the best skaters in the game. His shot is all above 90, which is incredible. D-King's 99. This is like the left-handed version of Kale McCarr. Unbelievable. End game, you know, skating, deking, all of that. The problem is he plays defense and he's 5'10". No matter what, he will get bumped off the puck fairly easily by anyone bigger. And in his own zone, his 92 body checking with everything activated does help considerably. But if you go up against someone like Byfield, it's going to be very tough still to bump him off the puck. Okay. The other issue is that we just had a few cards that, you know, are very, very close and similar, and I would just rather wait for bigger guys to come out. So again, like Byfield and Hints, the reason why, another reason why this event is kind of lackluster, when we take a look at Ty Smith, you'd have Distributor activated on Ty Smith, and while his acceleration is, for, is a much bigger increase, Ty Smith's only got one less speed. You take a look at his shot, a little bit lower, obviously, as well. Deking's just under at 92. Offensive awareness is higher. And then all of his body checking and strength attributes are actually higher. And Ty Smith's 5'11". Not that it matters all that much in terms of the difference in height. It's one inch. And then defensive awareness is higher on Ty Smith. And that's without any synergies other than distributors. So, again, just not really a ton of reason to go out and get this card when if you've already got Ty Smith, because it is still going to cost you about 400,000 coins to make this card. And at some point when some of the bigger guys like Hedman get an increase, these guys will fall off. So keep that in mind. I'd ra I'd still rather have Bowen Byram even made at the full cost now that that event is over with. And then lastly, we've got Kirill Kaprizov. This is a great card, no doubt. He's got Spark, so if you get Spark on him, his acceleration is 94. He's got Protector, Light the Lamp, and then Bombarded. There's no way to look around this. This is a great card. So even though I say, guys, that I'm not super excited about this event, these are still top-end cards that you can get. The one issue I have with Kaprizov is if you're going to spend 400,000 coins, or th about 380, to make him and get him all the way up to 92 just save those coins and buy his X-Factor. Now, it's going to take a long time to upgrade his X-Factor because there's a cost to every tier. I understand that. But if you play Hut Champs, it's very simple to get those upgrades to get him all the way up because his X-Factor card is one of the best in the game, and it will be for quite some time. And again, looking at last week's event... When you take a look at him or Jack Hughes, 93 speed, 95 acceleration. That's without buzzing activated, okay? So you go down the list here. Deking's a 99 on Jack Hughes. You go down, his body checking is a little bit higher on Kaprizov. But, or sorry, his, and his defensive awareness, though, much higher. Well, plus two. And stick checking is exactly the same. And you can play Hughes at center if you really need to. So it's just a much better value in terms of the master set, which is why I think this event is getting you know, kind of dunked on, on on Twitter and Reddit because, well, it's just an extension, and we've got two weeks of it. So if you want my honest opinion, K Kirill Kaprizov is still the best of these cards to get. If you have to get one of them, I'm still getting Kaprizov, maybe Brandstrom, just because Brandstrom right now, his speed is so much better than almost every other defenseman that you can do a lot of damage with that. But for anyone that gets stuck in their own zone, even with that high body checking, it's still going to be tough to knock some of the bigger players off, and you might find that frustrating. However, he will pretty much stop anyone on the rush because no one's faster than him other than McDavid and Duchesne off the top of my head. So one of those two. It's all going to depend on your team needs. That is what I would go after. Rupe Hens is a great option if you didn't get Doc, Byfield, or Cousins. Go ahead and grab Rupe Hens. I think that that could be an option as well. But really... 
I honestly am just waiting for the other three. There will be three more cards that are coming out, master items for this event. That's really what I'm waiting for. Um, because I think that you're going to see, you know, maybe some better ones. Let's talk another thing. Let's talk about some of the, you know, my thoughts on the master items. I know that they pick some of the more obscure players for master items because those cards aren't going to get a lot of team of the week or primetime upgrades throughout the year, which kind of makes sense. The problem is, is that they're not really popular players. Kaprizov, obviously, but Hints and Branstrom, if you're not a Senator or a, you know, or a Dallas Star fan, there's not a lot of people that have like super big interest in those players alone. I just kind of wish that I would see more of the high end players get the master sets. Like, let's take the Ottawa Senators, for example, Brady Kachuk. I would much rather have Brady Kachuk or Thomas Shabbat than Brandstrom. And that's just, I've seen that a lot in these events. These master items, for the most part, are just very, very obscure players. And while, like I said, I understand that they are trying to you know, focus and give some light on some of these other cards. But, I mean, if you go back to the Rivals event, you got Rasmus Anderson and Jesse Pugliarvi. Why not Doughty and Kachuk? Like, that was, like, a bigger one that I think, I mean, obviously you can't do Kane and Reeves, but I just think that, like, it, there, there's just some odd selections, and I, I hope that we see more of the better players highlighted as opposed to just random players. You know, a Calgary Flame needs a master set item because he doesn't have one. Let's give him to Rasmus Anderson as opposed to some of the bigger star players on their team. I do also need to mention, guys, the ability limits was increased. I'll probably talk about this more in, uh, in a future video, but it does make wheels a little bit more okay um, if you have Connor McDavid specifically, even Matt Duchesne, not both, but one of them, I've been hard on wheels not being, you know, useful because he's got such high speed anyways, but now Connor's got 97 speed. And if he can keep that throughout the whole, like there's no one else other than McDavid or Duchesne that can really keep up with that with the puck. So I think that's worth it because now no longer is it such a giant portion of your uh, ability points. It's now one fourth, which is a little bit easier to stomach, especially if you don't have a ton of top end guys that have amazing abilities. Some of the other ones I'm looking at, guys, passing, passing so much harder this year because of you know the, the skill gap they 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 created with it. The other one I'm trying out is puck on a string because of the stick handling speed. So stick handling is left to right movement, and left to right movement is so important in this game. Just when you're skating, no matter what, to try and keep your opponent from checking the puck. So I'm really just trying puck on a string on a lot of my players as well as shut down um, on my defensemen that have it so just wanted to give a quick shout out to that but let me know guys in the comment section down below what you think of the master items from this event and i will see you guys next time have a good one